Life's ways are full weary, the desert is wild, bleak sands are all round us, no home can we see. Sweet spouse of our lady, we glean upon thee, for thou to the pilgrim art father and guide, and Jesus and Mary fell safe by thy side. Our blessed Saint Joseph, how safe should I be? Sweet spouse of our lady, if thou wert with me. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Good evening, dear brothers and sisters. Despite all the restrictions that the lockdown is imposing to us, we can still encounter the Lord in His Word, in the Eucharist. And the liturgy of this Sunday, we are invited to be united, to remain with Christ. And the privileged space and moment which we can be united with Him in the, is in the prayer, is in the celebration of the Eucharist. So, in order to enter this mystery with more depth, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, bless Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing by the forgiveness of God, let us praise him by saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in Holy Baptism, May under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples. 
and they were all afraid of him for they did not believe that he was a disciple but barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the lord who spoke to him and how at damascus he had preached boldly in the name of jesus so he went in and out among them at jerusalem preaching boldly in the name of the lord and he spoke and disputed against the hellenists but they were seek kill him and when the brothers learned this they brought him down to caesarea and sent him off to tarsus so the church throughout all judea and galilee and samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the lord and in the comfort of the holy spirit multiplied word of the lord our response hallelujah my vows i will pay before those who fear him the poor shall eat and shall have their fill they shall praise the lord those who seek him may their hearts live on forever and ever cons hallelujah all the earth shall remember and return to the lord all the families of the nations worship before him they shall worship him all the mighty of the earth before him shall bow all who go down to the dust cons hallelujah and my soul shall live for him my descendants serve him they shall tell of the lord the generations yet to come declare his saving justice to the peoples yet unborn these things the lord has done response hallelujah second reading a reading from the letter of saint john little children let us not love in word or talk but in deed and in truth by this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him for whenever our heart condemns us god is greater than our heart and he knows everything beloved if our heart does not condemn us we have confidence before god whatever we ask receive from him because we his commandment and do what please him and this is his commandment that we believe in the name of his son jesus christ and love one another just as he has commanded us whoever keeps his commandments abides in god and god in him and by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given who he has given us word of the lord gospel acclamation hallelujah abide in me i in you says the lord whoever by abides in me bears much fruit the lord be with you and reading from the holy gospel according to saint john at that time jesus said to his disciples i am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit already you are clean because of the word that i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches whoever abides in me and i in him he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned 
If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The brothers and sisters, as it was stated at the beginning of this celebration, we are invited to abide in Christ. We are invited, invited to be with him. So this image of the true vine and the vine dresser and then the branches is the way how John the evangelist chose to explain to us how this union of the disciples with his master, Jesus, is essential to us, like we see, for example, in the experience of any plant. We know very well from botanic or biology that any plant that has its branch detached, we know that that branch is cut off, does not have any more any source of life in itself. Even in the case that we prune it to plant and make a new flower, flower pot, for example, we know that at the end, that life of the new branch that is going to become an independent plant is no more connected does not depend anymore on that plant from which it was detached before. This is to say that the existence of the Christians is so that it cannot be taught, it cannot be lived without its deeply connection with Jesus Christ. We are Christians, and it's funny to say, because we are followers of Jesus Christ. It will not be a Christian, it will not be a faithful if there was no Jesus Christ. Not only that, the gospel is saying that we, our life depends on him, but also that if we are a branch that is supposed to bear fruit, if we are Christians that are supposed to bear fruit in our Christian life, it means this you depend on how far we are connected, united in Jesus Christ. This means that there is no other possibility for a Christian life without a strong connection with Jesus. And how can we be connected to him? How can we, for example, remain in him? One of the first indications we can find in the first reading, where it describes, for example, the experience of Saul, how he became a faithful disciple of Jesus, or mostly a fervent preacher of the gospel. This means that, first of all, bearing fruit is glorifying the Lord for announcing his son, Jesus Christ, announcing what God the Father has made in him through the work of his resurrection. So, if we want to bear fruit, we are supposed also to take part in the mission of Jesus Christ, announce the gospel, witnessing Jesus Christ with our own personal lives. And not only that, because also we see, for example, in the second reading, the first letter of St. John, in which is a state this, that, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him. Because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And what is this keeping his commandment? It is, is stated afterwards. And this is his commandment, and that we believe in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of God. This is the first commandment, that we believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and love one another. Maybe for most of us, it's much more easier to believe in Jesus Christ, to pray to him, to entrust our lives to him. But much more difficult sometimes is to love one another, because all of us, we have our own affinities, 
our own relationships, our own needs. And many times it becomes difficult for us to open a space to love the other who is so different from us, who has different thoughts and ideas, who sometimes behaves in a way that we do not like. But yet, if we are to glorify the God by bearing fruit at the gospel is telling us to do, we don't have other way. We have to believe in Jesus Christ, but at the same time, love one another. Because this is his commandment. This is the way how we can please him through our faithful Christian life. So, this liturgy of this Sunday, we are invite, God is inviting us, first of all, to ask ourselves, how far in our personal life do we feel and we are truly connected with Jesus Christ, the true wine? How far do we feel that we are just branches of this true wine so that we can say that our spiritual life, our thoughts, our decisions, our choices really comes from the guidance that he gives through his word? Because he is telling to his disciples, you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. We are a clean branches, a pruned branches, because we already received this word that shapes and changes our lives and makes us able to bear fruit. At the same time, so we are invited to reflect how far this word is it still being so important in our lives so that helps us to be pruned every day to bear fruit? And at the same time, what is bearing fruit? This bearing fruit is not pretending externally that we believe in Jesus Christ by many, so many, doing so many things just to be seen. But at the end is the desire within our hearts that the Father may be glorified by the way that we live. That people looking at us can realize that God is important in our life. That Jesus Christ is the true meaning of our existence. So much so that they can recognize that we are true disciples of Jesus by the way how we live and behave with others. Dear brothers and sisters, let us ask Jesus that with the guidance of his Holy Spirit, it can help us to have our strength renewed in the desire to follow him and be faith to him and remain with him so that we can be this branch that bears much fruit. Dear brothers and sisters, nourished by the word of God, we want to renew our faith in him by saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the in Holy God's Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus uses parables to communicate profound messages. The parable of the wine of the vine and the branches is a wonderful way of conveying the need for remaining attached to Jesus in order to produce fruit. Let us now place our petitions before the Lord, saying, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that in the delicate task of teaching, correcting, and encouraging the faithful, they may be guided by the Holy Spirit, which is God's gift to all who believe in Him. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Catholic faithful may be exhorted to read and meditate on the Word of God, so that the life-giving Word may remove darkness from their minds and 
Fill them with longing for truth and justice. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For people who walk in darkness, those without a clear purpose in life, and who are vulnerable that the light of Christ may enlighten them to return to a purpose-ridden life, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our families may be become abodes where faith is nourished, love and fellowship cherished, so that our families may become dwelling places where each member has the opportunity to be happy and successful. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that by bearing the fruits that are required of us, we may give glory to God, who is the Father of all. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us pray for our personal needs. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of life and sonship that you have granted us. Give us the grace that we may not forsake these precious gifts, but by using them we may bear the fruits that will last to eternal life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I give my hands to do your work. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Oh God, by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partake of the one supreme Godhead. Grant, we pray, that we have come to know your truth. We make the hours by a worthy way of life. Draw Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. 
but in this time above all, to Lord yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the older order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with the Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer, our Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who haven't fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have a pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now we make a prayer in order to receive the Lord spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious, be present your people, we pray, O Lord, 
and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries who pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father in the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.